Tonight, WWE presents another episode of Friday Night Smackdown on Fox from inside the WWE Thunderdome, inside the Youngling Center in Tampa Bay, Florida, and a very surprising main event for tonight's show because it's something that I don't think anyone really expected to see on SmackDown this week because it was meant to be the main event for Hell in a Cell this coming weekend. And it's not. We're getting it a couple of days early. We're getting it on SmackDown. And that is a Hell in a Cell match. Yes, it's the first time ever, as far as I'm aware, that a Hell in a Cell match has taken place on SmackDown. It's not the first time a Hell in a Cell match has taken place on WWE television on free TV because a couple did actually air in 1998 on Monday Night Raw on Raw is War. But certainly since the first time since then and uh, the first Hell in a Cell match ever to take place on SmackDown it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio for the WWE Universal Championship a Hell in a Cell match and of course as I mentioned this match was scheduled to take place on uh, the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view this coming weekend but Rey Mysterio changed all that last night certainly came out of nowhere like I said he suddenly sent out a tweet and said, I can't wait any longer. I want to have the Hell in a Cell match tomorrow night on SmackDown. Roman Reigns gladfully accepted. He said, Friday, Sunday, whatever day it is, I'm going to destroy you and your family's legacy. So the Hell in a Cell match is on. Now, I spoke about this quite in depth earlier in today's news video, WWE news video. So be sure to check that out on the channel. But I spoke about this quite in depth is that I was frankly staggered. I mean, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be staggered when people overreact on social media. People get angry on social media. But I was I was very surprised. First of all, I was surprised just that they did this in general because I thought, well, obviously, I thought they were going to do this week this weekend. But we'll touch on that in a second. I was so surprised by... I mean, I, there was there was a positive reaction. I, I was going to say the negative reaction. There was a positive reaction. People were going, oh, it's great, very exciting, because it's out of the norm. It makes SmackDown tonight must-see, and it does open up the question, what are they going to do for Hell in a Cell on Sunday? Certainly something's changed here. Something different is going to happen. We're going to see something unique on SmackDown tonight, and we're going to see something different than what we expected to see on Hell in a Cell on Sunday. So that's a good thing, but... That was the positive reaction, but there was a lot of negative reaction that I saw on social media about this. And again, I was just so surprised by it because, uh, one, I saw I saw this, and maybe it's just me you know, zooming in on a couple of comments, but I saw one comment that said, oh, I can't believe they're burying Rey Mysterio. He's going to bury Rey Mysterio like Roman Reigns buried everyone. He buried Cesaro, and he d buried Daniel Bryan, and he buried Edge, and he buried Kevin Owens, and he buried all this kind of stuff. Oh, Look, Roman Reigns is the hottest thing going in WWE today. There is nobody, nobody that's anywhere near being as red hot as Roman Reigns is right now. There is nobody that is anywhere near as being over as Roman Reigns is right now. There is nobody that is doing anywhere near the compelling work or the compelling promos or the compelling storylines or the compelling matches. Nobody is anywhere near the level that Roman Reigns is at right now. He should be dominating people. Roman Reigns hasn't lost since he came back in August last year, and he shouldn't have, because there's no reason for him to lose. There is nobody that's anywhere near him. There is nobody you can justify Roman Reigns to lose to right now. Even John Cena. When John Cena comes back and faces Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, you couldn't justify John Cena winning. You can't. If he wins, he wins the 17th World Championship, and you can't. You just can't justify that, considering the role that Roman Reigns is on right now, and considering the, the sheer lack Sheer lack of big main event stars that WWE has right now. You can't justify Roman Reigns losing to, to anyone. And I think maybe it shows that the lack of depth that WWE has in terms of legit main event stars. Maybe that's a separate conversation to have. But there is no justification for Roman Reigns to lose to anyone. So I don't see Roman Reigns burying. Ah, oh, I can't believe he buried. Blah, blah, blah. Some people, they use that word bury and they don't know that they just don't know the terminology of it. They, they, they don't. And maybe that's the problem with, you know, the business being so well known and the inner workings of the business being so well known at this point that people use this terminology and they don't really understand it. They don't understand Roman Reigns beating anyone isn't burying anyone. WWE isn't burying any talent that works with Roman Reigns. If anything, WWE having any talent that works with Roman Reigns is elevating them because they're probably making the most money by working on a main event program against the guy that's the most over guy on the television show right now in the in the entire company on the TV show that's most viewed of the most viewed out of any TV shows that WWE does right now. So I think anyone would be happy to work with Roman Reigns right now. And frankly, anyone that does work with Roman Reigns right now is probably making some pretty good money. So I don't think anyone, anyone has an issue with working with Roman Reigns. Whether it's Edge or Daniel Bryan in a WrestleMania main event, frankly, whether it's Cesaro having his first ever Universal Championship opportunity in a main event of a pay-per-view, something he's never done before, or whether it's Kevin Owens getting featured, whether it's Rey Mysterio now being featured. He's not being buried by anyone. Now, the other criticism I saw, which again, surprised me, but I shouldn't be surprised at anything I see on social media nowadays, but the other criticism I saw is 
I can't believe they're giving this away on free TV. Oh, I can't believe they're giving this away on free TV. How stupid are WWE? First of all, I think, you know, why why are we criticizing that? Why? It makes SmackDown worth watching tonight. Not that it isn't anyway, but certainly is an extra reason to watch. It makes it SmackDown feel like a big show. And shouldn't, shouldn't you be happy? Shouldn't be, you be happy that you don't, if you don't subscribe to the network, which you, I mean, I don't know. If you don't subscribe to Peacock, which, you know, I don't blame you from what I've heard about it, not great. But if you don't, if you don't subscribe to the network, you're getting a Hell in the Cell match on free TV. You can't believe your luck. If you're a casual WWE fan and you don't watch it that often, you're like, oh, I didn't really, I don't know if I'm really that interested in watching SmackDown. It's on a Friday night and, you know, I, I mainly watch it because it's on Fox and there's not a lot else on to watch and all that kind of stuff. If you get a Hell in the Cell match, you're flipping through the channels, you think, great. Oh, what a reason to watch the show. Oh, of course I'll watch SmackDown tonight. And, and that's what it is as well. It should. Fing I mean, if you're WWE, fingers crossed because you are giving the match away on free TV. But you would hope that tonight would do very good ratings. For SmackDown, every time they've done a Universal Championship main event on SmackDown, they've done good numbers. Whether it was that Christmas Day uh, episode that they had on SmackDown, which did the huge number for them. Biggest since, what, their second episode they ever did on Fox? Something like 3 million viewers. Arguably, that was more due to the lead-in than anything else. I don't think that was due to having, you know, an Intercontinental Championship match, a Universal Championship match, a you know, women's tag team title match, steel cage match. I don't think that was because of that. Frankly, that Christmas Day episode, the reason they did so great is because they had uh, the, the lead-in to that was live NFL coverage. And it just shows how important a lead-in is. A strong lead-in like that, even the drop-off of people that weren't watching, um, the, after watching the NFL coverage, there were still like 3 million people that watched because once they got to that second hour, that's when it oof, really did drop significantly. But that first hour was like 4 million people tuned in because of the NFL lead-in. So that just goes to show. So I don't think we're going to get like 3 million viewers average tonight, far from it. But I think WWE would be looking at this saying, look, we've got to be, you know, we've been, we've been below that 2 million mark in recent weeks. Surely, surely, with a Hell in a Cell main event, even though it was just announced yesterday, but a Hell in a Cell main event, Universal Championship, one would hope, surely one would hope they would get over 2 million. And I think they probably will. So that plays into that as well. And again, the criticism of people saying, I can't believe they're giving this away on free TV. I can't believe they're doing this. I can't believe they're doing that. Look, I understand if you, you maybe don't trust WWE. I, I get it. If you look at WWE and says, oh, their storytelling you know, process isn't great and they don't do long-term storytelling, they don't. WWE doesn't do long-term storytelling. I'm with you. Trust me, I'm with you when it comes to that. But in cases like this, and in most cases, frankly, I think you have to be you have to be willing to see where they're going to go with it. It's, it I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to just write things off and, and say things are terrible and say things are bad before WWE has indeed done something, especially in stuff like this, right? You know, in these kind of situations where they have advertised a, a big main event and they have advertised the Hell in a Cell match and they have advertised a Universal Championship match, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what they do. And then coming out of it, we can then criticize it or we can praise it or we can say our opinions on it. I don't think it's fair. I, I really don't think it's fair to, you know, see this match be advertised last night and some people jumping all over it and saying, oh, terrible WWE creative, terrible this, terrible that. But let's wait and see. Let's wait and see because obviously... Something has changed and obviously something has been planned here and obviously they've settled on some kind of a plan when it comes to SmackDown for tonight and for Hell in a Cell on Sunday. I think that's important to say as well because it does come across as a big change. It does come across as something that's a bit surprising and something that does feel a bit last minute and obviously you would think that sometime last night, sometime Thursday afternoon, evening, whatever, the creative was decided on for SmackDown and for Hell in a Cell when it pertains to the Universal Championship, when it pertains to Roman Reigns. Obviously, they decided, look, we're going to change what we were going to do on Sunday because I do genuinely think that the plan, because the plan, at least for the last two or three weeks, you can tell by the way they've been booking that show, the plan has been to do Roman Reigns versus versus Rey Mysterio for the Universal Championship inside Hell in a Cell. For whatever reason, and time will only tell why, and we'll certainly find out after SmackDown tonight, for whatever reason, WWE has decided, actually, we're going to go in a different direction here. We're going to do something different on Sunday, so we're going to move this match that was meant to happen on Sunday. We're going to move it to Friday on SmackDown. Now, again, time will only tell as to what that is. But obviously, last night, sometime yesterday evening, sometimes yesterday, I don't know, afternoon, whatever, the decision was made, okay, we're changing plans, I think, for Hell in a Cell on Sunday. So to get there, we're moving this match to Friday. What could that plan be? Well, I, I think... <laughs> 
the story that they were trying to tell, wasn't it, is that this is, Rey Mysterio is a father avenging the attack on his son, right? Roman Reigns attacked Dominic Mysterio a couple of times, whether it was the steel chair a couple of weeks ago, whether it was powerbombing outside of the ring last week on SmackDown, Rey Mysterio is avenging his son. He's, he's fighting for his legacy in the same way that Roman Reigns is, but in a different manner. So he's trying to avenge his son, and he was going to do that inside Hell in the Cell. He was going to do that by taking the Universal Championship, and it was going to be set on Father's Day, right? Because Father's Day is Sunday, and it was kind of be a situation whereby the father fights for his son on Father's Day inside of the Hell in the Cell. That's a good story. That's a good story. I wish they would have probably hyped up the Father's Day stuff a bit more. I think they could have done that more ahead of time, but that's a good story. I don't have an issue with that at all, frankly. So I think that would have been an interesting story for them to go down. But obviously they've changed. So what have they changed to? Logic would suggest that if you're going to have Rey Mysterio facing Roman Reigns tonight inside Hell in the Cell, theoretically nobody can get inside or out. We'll wait and see whether that happens. Logic would suggest this is what I would think would happen, is that tonight on SmackDown you have Reigns versus Mysterio, and I think the match will be given a considerable amount of time. I think, you know, considering Monday night on Raw, they blocked off, what, 45 minutes for a six-man tag team match or a singles match that turned into a six-man tag team match. They can block off 45 minutes worth of television for Reigns versus Rey Mysterio inside Hell in a Cell for the Universal Championship. I mean, my gosh, if you can't do that, what can you do? So I think that's what they're going to go with uh, tonight for, for this one. I think they're going to get given plenty of time. But if no one can get inside or outside the cage... I would think Roman Reigns, like he did to his cousin, Jey Uso, last year in October at that Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. I would think Roman Reigns destroys Rey Mysterio, beats the absolute holy hell out of him, decimates him, Reigns defeats him, retains the Universal Championship. And then after the match, he points at Dominic Mysterio and says, right, you're next. Because I still need an opponent for Sunday. I still need a challenger for the Universal Championship. I still need a challenger for inside Hell in the Cell on Sunday on Father's Day. Now, I can't have the father, maybe I have the son. And Roman Reigns says, kid, it's time for you to step up. Because on Sunday, it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Dominic Mysterio inside Hell in a Cell for the Universal Championship. And I think maybe WWE are looking at this to say that you can still play up the Father's Day angle by having the son avenge the father. On Father's Day, you're avenging your father. That, that works just as well as the father avenging the son inside Hell in a Cell. And I think they're almost looking at it as well as to say, this whole thing... With Rey Mysterio and Roman Reigns, it's a it's a David versus Goliath story. And I know that nobody does David versus Goliath better than Rey Mysterio. He's made a career out of it, especially in WWE, the whole David versus Goliath thing. I mean, that is Rey Mysterio to a T. The small guy going up against bigger guys, defying the odds, becoming a, a world champion on multiple occasions. All of that, that's Rey Mysterio's story, right? And they were probably aiming towards that as well as the father-son avenging the, the son angle on Father's Day inside Hell in the Cell. That's what they were going for. I think WWE may have looked at this and said, actually, what's a bigger David versus Goliath story? Is it Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio, who is a multiple-time world champion, one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time, one of the greatest baby faces of all time, one of the greatest underdogs of all time? That's a David versus Goliath story, absolutely. But Roman Reigns versus Dominic Mysterio, inside Hell in the Cell, inexperienced rookie, has been doing this for, what, a year on WWE television, not even that. He made his in-ring debut at SummerSlam last year against Seth Rollins in a street fight. I think WWE might look at this and say, actually, arguably the bigger David versus Goliath story isn't Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio here. It's Roman Reigns versus Dominic Mysterio. Because nobody thinks Dominic Mysterio is going to win in the same vein that nobody thinks Rey Mysterio is going to win. The outcome for both matches is predictable here. Everyone knows the outcome. Roman Reigns is not going to drop the Universal Championship to anyone. Even when he faces John Cena, like I said, even when he faces John Cena at uh, SummerSlam in August, everyone knows the outcome. John Cena is not becoming the Universal Champion. Roman Reigns, for me, is holding that Universal Championship until WrestleMania next year. And he might even retain it at WrestleMania next year. Because if he's facing The Rock, The Rock isn't becoming the Universal Champion either. So unless they have, you know, already made talent to take the title off of Roman Reigns next year at WrestleMania, which again, I don't think they do, because I don't look at that SmackDown roster or that Raw roster, unless your name's maybe Drew McIntyre, that's the only guy you could say maybe could take the title off of um, off of Roman Reigns. But even the sort of shine is wearing off him at the moment. And again, that's just because of bad booking on Monday Night Raw. That's not McIntyre's fault. Certainly isn't McIntyre's fault. But Rey Mysterio isn't taking the Universal Championship off of, of Roman Reigns, and nor is Dominic Mysterio. So I think they maybe look at this and say, look, either way, everyone thinks Rey Myster uh, Roman Reigns is going to win. And the, the storyline we're going for is a David versus Goliath story. What is the bigger David versus Goliath story? Is it Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio, who we know is capable? We know is capable. We know is someone that could become the Universal Champion, someone that could 
you know, beat Roman Reigns because he's defied the odds before. He has become world champion before in his career, beating some of the biggest names in WWE history. We've seen Rey Mysterio do that. Or is the bigger David versus Goliath story actually Roman Reigns versus Dominic Mysterio, a guy that has been wrestling less than a year on WWE television? Yes, he's the SmackDown Tag Team Champion, but he's with the, he's done that with his father. His father essentially won the championships on his own at WrestleMania Backlash against Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Of course, he's never been a world champion before. It's way, way too early in his career to even be challenging for a world championship. And I think the story of a guy at his peak, you know, and the, the top guy in the company, the top heel in the company, arguably the top guy in the industry, beating the hell out of essentially a kid inside of a structure that nobody can get in and out and essentially making his father watch, whether that's outside of the cell or at home or in a hospital bed or whatever, that's probably a more compelling storyline. That's probably a more more compelling storyline and a more compelling match. And as we get closer and closer to WWE returning to touring in July, and as we get closer and closer to having live fans return in July... There is the possibility, again, how do we make sure that this Roman Reigns character stays as a heel? How do we make sure this guy gets booed? You have to do vicious stuff. You have to show that extra level. You have to show that extra gear of a guy that has that snarl in his face and then is just just a vicious, brutal. I mean, you already see the, the heel in him by the gaslighting that he's doing with his, with his cousins, with Jimmy and Jey Uso. But there is a, probably a concern from WWE's point of view right now in that this is a character that is very cool. I mean, the Roman Reigns character is incredibly compelling. And they saw at WrestleMania, Roman Reigns did get booed. He did get booed in that match against Edge and Daniel Bryan. But as they return to touring, as they return to competing in front of live crowds, there's a real possibility here. There is a very real possibility that Roman Reigns, he gets heavily cheered. He could come out on that first Friday on uh, SmackDown in July in Texas. He might get cheered, and I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure he'll get a massive reaction. And now WWE have to realize, again, we can't control the reactions that we're getting inside the Thunderdome. We can't control, we can't pipe in these boos, and we can't pipe in these cheers, and we can't tell, uh, we can't have a producer telling the WWE Thunderdome audience, oh, boo, put your thumbs down and say you hate Roman Reigns and all that kind of stuff. They can't do that anymore. They can't dictate uh, the crowd's response. They can try and influence it, and that's what they've got to do. They've got to try and already precondition the audience that is buying tickets, whether it's for the SmackDowns, whether it's for the live events, whether it's for some slam they need to precondition the audience to not like roman reigns how do they do that they have him beat a beloved baby face like Rey mysterio and then on top of that how do they go to an an, an extra level in cementing reigns as this top heel is this vicious just dominating vicious you know unsavory horrible horrible heel how do they go to that next level well they have him just absolutely decimate and destroy again a kid inside one of the most vicious and violent matches in WWE history on Sunday in Hell in the Cell, on Father's Day, so wherever Rey Mysterio may be, considering the beating that he's probably going to get tonight on SmackDown, you know, on Father's Day, they have, you know, Rey Mysterio watching, again, from either his hospital bed or at home, or maybe even ringside if he manages to make it out. They have Rey Mysterio watch this just big, dominating Universal Champion just absolutely beat the hell out of his son. That is a top heel right there. That is legitimate heel heat. And I think WWE probably looked at this and said, look, two birds with one stone. We can do a massive main event for SmackDown. It does a big number because it should do a big number. So people will be watching. It does a good lead in for Hell in a Cell on Sunday. It gets people excited and conditioned for Hell in a Cell on Sunday. They can say it's the first time ever. We know how much WWE loves to do those first time evers. You can say, look, it's the first time ever Hell in a Cell match in SmackDown history. They love that. Fox will love that as well. And on top of that, you have Roman Reigns destroy the father and he destroys the son. It gets more heel heat on Roman Reigns. Now, as far as what he does coming out of Sunday, I still think there's a match for him to face. Jimmy Uso, does that happen now at Money in the Bank with fans returning? That's a possibility. I think maybe they might have saved that Roman Reigns versus Jimmy Uso match. They may have actually saved it for that live crowd at, at, at Money in the Bank. Maybe, who knows? But certainly, look, it's it's a fascinating announcement, a very exciting announcement. I, of course, am going to be very, very excited. I think we will do a post-show stream after uh, tonight's SmackDown talking about this match because how can you not talk about what is <laughs> you know the first ever Hell in a Cell match on SmackDown history? So that's massive news. But I think, obviously, Roman Reigns retains, and I think, obviously, we're going to see major Hell in a Cell ramifications for Sunday. But 
But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. Let me know your thoughts on Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio inside Hell in the South for the Universal Championship tonight in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys talking about WWE, AW, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go to the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.